back to work. Today, though, we've got a little bit of an East Coast theme happening on City Line. Please welcome Chef Jason Parsons. Hello. This Hello. awesome recipe. Yeah. He decided to sort of lean towards the East because Sarah Gunn, one of the experts on the show, she's an East Coaster. She loves going out there with her kids. And we thought, hey, let's, why don't we do, why don't you do some well, East Coast inspired recipes? Disclaimer along the bottom right now. Yes. My twist on traditional East For Coast. Because sure. I know For I'm sure. going to get people, ah, oh, that's not how you do it. But what I've discovered is, like, even we're going to do lobster rolls later in the show. Yeah. You can take two steps to the left and someone else does it differently. Like, there are so many different ways to do things. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what recipes should be about. Exactly. It should be about doing it with your own interpretation. Yeah, for sure. Right? But, uh, first so these we're gonna are, we're going to do salmon, salmon cakes. cakes. Yeah. Yum. And really simple to make. And I'm going to put you to work here. I'm going to get you to okay. mash these. So all I've done. I can mash. Um, some basic potatoes, peeled them down, cooked them. Yeah. You know, now, <clears throat> you can actually do the masher or the ricer and push them through and make it really fine if you want. Yeah. But in this case, I'm just getting you to take a fork and just loosely break it down. It just adds a little bit more texture to it. Well, also, you know? it depends on how you like your potatoes, because my mom always made them kind of chunky. Mom, but I like that. It's yep. not a bad thing. <laughs> but she always made them kind of chunky, and I think that's a good thing. Should I be mastering this yeah, as well? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, don't okay. touch the salmon. No, oh. that's fine. Okay. Uh, no, but the thing is, too, is, I mean, you can actually put this in a mixer and whip it with the, uh, the paddle, like the, you know, the, uh, and I'll break it down even smoother. Right. But I kind of like the idea of biting it and you get sometimes a little bit more salmon, a little yeah, bit of like potato, and so on. A little bit of chunk. So salmon, again, you can just throw it in the barbecue and roast, you know, you this is a great way to use leftover salmon. You know, you're cooking six pieces because there's four people over. Maybe yeah. everybody's had too much to drink because they can't eat anymore. Right. Why do I always go back to drink? I don't know. It happens to <laughs> me yes, too. It's a lot, I know. But, you know, salmon, what do you do with it? Well, sometimes we make little salmon sandwiches out of it, but you can just make little cakes. You know? Very so, nice. So it's cooked down and we're just flaking them. And you don't, what, how did you cook yours? You're saying that we could do whatever we want, but what did you do? This one here, I literally just uh, actually boiled up a, a little bit of wine. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, a little bit Back of fish stock, a little road. bit of herbs. Uh, yeah. I boiled it, dropped the salmon in, turned it off, and let it cook. Okay. And that's it. You know, it just basically it softens it down, gives it great flavor. Uh, but you can do and it, it looks anyway. perfectly that's perfect. pink. Nice. And thank you very much. So I got a little work out there yeah, too. Good. We got salmon, we got potatoes, but we want to add some great flavors to this. So gherkins. Yeah. You know, those little gherkins, those little pickles. And oh, you can, yeah. if you really like pickle flavor, take some pickles and chop them up. Yeah. Uh, but be careful with the brininess of that. It's going to give it some bite. Yeah, capers. They'll chop capers in there. Love capers. Yep. Oh, um, they love capers too. Yep. Raw shallots. Okay. You know, as Frankie says, I think I've got shares in shallots, you know, so. You're all about the yep. shallots. Um, and then if you were going to use the whole pickles, I would not put some lemon juice in there. But because I'm going to actually, I do the little gherkins, yeah. and a little bit of lemon juice in there too. Nice. And I just think that, that what's nice with that, it gives a little freshness to it, you know? It does. And then all those beautiful herbs. So, and I've just taken, Smells you know, good, Jace. parsley, basil, tarragon, you know, again, all those really soft, fresh herbs. You know? But look at how beautiful this oh, yeah. looks, too. you got a complete meal going on with each fish cake. For sure. And I mean, this is, you know, this is just a, you can put that on bread right now because it's all cooked, right? Yeah. And just do a sandwich. But uh, yeah. we're going to make it better than that. So. Do you think that's ooey gooey enough to pat it all well, together? You, you know me, I always have some more made already because just in case. Good, because I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, So what I've done is, we'll you know, it's good if you chill it up a little bit first. Right? Yeah. But then what you do, and you could take a little cookie cutter or whatever, but you want to kind of make, uh, and, you know, we're Canadian, so we get it, hockey pucks. That's the best way to make it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> any size you want. And you can do really small ones of these. Yes. And then, and then you can do it for canapes. Fantastic, right? That is smart. Yeah. But, uh, or you can gonna... do little salmon sliders. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's exactly really the way right? to go, right? A little bit of oil in my pan here. There Your perfect go. pan. And you don't want to go too hot on this. I want to just slowly brown them. But here's the thing. You want a nice little crispy coating on the outside. So what I've done is actually just take a little bit of flour. Okay. Now, you don't want to put too much flour on. So when you put the flour on, just give it a little tap. You know, take some of the flour off. And that's just going to give it a little bit of a crispy. Now I'm going to put this one in there. It's but it's best if you pop them in the fridge and let them sit for about half an hour, 40 minutes before you. Because the, co the potatoes will firm back up. Right. And then so that way they'll just they'll be a little easy to handle in the pan. Now okay? this part I would think is sort of the fussy part. How long do you know to leave it in? Or is this the easy part? Well, the great thing is it's cooked already. Right. So what you're doing is warming you're it just, through. You're, yeah, you're no just wrong warming it up and browning yeah. it really. You don't want it too hot. You just slightly crispy on the outside and away you go. You want it really, really hot. Yeah. But the thing for me is what I do is I brown them. Uh -huh. And then I pop them in the oven. That way there's oh. no having to, because by the time you get the center hot, the outside's going to be burnt. Right. So then you just make them, you know, like that. Look how great they look. That looks right? so good. And the thing is, you can make them to this stage and then put them on a tray, put them in your freezer, freeze them down, put them yeah. in little Ziploc bags. 
Really good. Pull them out. You know, I don't want to feel like cooking tonight. Take them out, defrost them, pan fry them up. Get a nice little glaze on that. Look, look at that already. Yeah, it doesn't take very long. So I'm going to go as far as to say that yep. if your child has very good taste and a good palate, don't you think this would be a good lunch? Very good. Right? Very it's good. portable. It's something oh, yeah. really easy. It's yep. not going to be smelly. They always say don't send your kid to school with smelly lunches. <laughs> These aren't smelly. Well, and you can eat them cold, they too. They smell good. They're really great cold. And, and what you can I've eat done, them cold. you know, same here. I've just taken some mayonnaise. Yeah. And then I've just taken the capers, the gherkins, a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah. Made a tartar sauce. Very nice. You know, so you've got all the ingredients there. So save yeah. a little bit extra. And then ready to go, dip it in, and there it is, something simple as salmon. Okay, now I want to tell you what my homemade tartar sauce is. Oh. It's mayonnaise and relish. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, good. That's I thought right. I was going to get in so much Well, I thought you were going to do tartar sauce. Done, you know, but at least you got two jars that you're no, opening. Yeah, so I do, good, right? I do. So, I mix two products well, okay, together. Okay, but if you're going to do that, though, I always say, yeah. like, if you've got some relish, you've got some mayonnaise, then throw in a little bit of her fresh herbs. I know. Throw in that's a little bit I'm of, lacking. you know, take a lemon and, you know, just... Take a simple lemon like this, a rasp, and grate it down, drizzle mm -hmm. over top, but add a little bit of your own flair to it. A little bit of something yeah. to give it that oomph. Well, this no. is fantastic. We're putting this recipe on our website at cityline.ca. Ooh, a little add bit a of chili. pepper. Add a chili to it. Very good. We're going to break. More coming up. Stay with us.